Washington Mornings on the Mall at AM 630. 807 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk, and it's a place where Washington comes to celebrate. We're celebrating the Redskins' victory last night over the the Giants and looking forward to the next opponents, the uh, the the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah, if only we knew somebody up in Baltimore that we could give a hard time to this week. Yeah, I don't know what I have to think. I I, I could probably find someone. I I can think of one person at least. Okay. Hey, listen, um, we'll get to that in just a moment. But we thought we would we would talk about something that we read. We thought very interesting thing. You know, Pat Cadell, thoughtful guy. He's a Democratic pollster. He has uh, written a, a little column here that sort of uh, caught our attention this morning. And we thought, hey, I wonder if Pat Cadell will get up early and be on our morning show. And since it is the place where Washington comes to talk, sure enough, he wanted to come here and talk about Pat it. Pat Cadell lives for, anyone who knows Pat Cadell knows that he lives for the mornings. That's right. Pat Cadell, how are you? Great. How are y'all? Well, we're we're doing very well. This uh, this uh, little uh, thing that you wrote here grabbed our attention, and basically, it seems odd that a guy who's known as a Democratic pollster has advice for the Republicans as they try to negotiate their way and avoid going over the fiscal cliff. Cliff in these dis- discussions they're having right now with the White House. But you had an idea that I thought had merit. So lay it out. What is it that Republicans are sort of missing in these negotiations? Well, I was just trying to analyze because it fascinates me endlessly how badly the Republicans, uh, you know, it reminds me of Casey Stengel's uh, uh, statement about the 62 Mets, can anybody here play this game? Mm -hmm. You know, they're, you know, they're being herded, they're being run right now. I mean, they're they're retreating all over the place in disarray. But it strikes me that uh, President Obama, who has badly overreached on one part of the package that Geithner put forward, I mean, the whole thing was, I think, a little absurd, but the uh, which was reminiscent to me of uh, Franklin Roosevelt's uh, efforts after his reelection in '36 to pack the Supreme Court, and that is to arrogate to himself, demanding the power that he be laterally able to raise the debt limit without any input from Congress and just basically uh, willy nilly whatever, just spend the country into whatever particular hell he wishes to send it. Yeah, I, I um, see where you're headed, but why is, is, is that is, is that offensive to you and to many others? Well, well, because we have a Constitution, for one thing. Yeah. And secondly, just as in 37, there's a lot of Democrats who said that Roosevelt, he'd gone too far, it's a second-term hubris. It is, though, from a political purpose right now, for the Republicans, they need to change the debate. They need to be able to refocus what the attention is. It's just like war. And, and in a sense, uh, this is a retreating army that needs to take a stand. And it has a place to stand on it if it just would use a little imagination. If I were them, I would stop everything I was doing. And I would say, look, be, there can be no negotiations until the president takes this proposal and, and withdraws it. And uh, Geithner, uh, there's out of his mind, have a national debate, have a, have a, have a teaching moment, I think. This yeah modern term is, over whether or not the country thinks that the debt doesn't matter and the debt limit doesn't matter and that the President Obama, who's run up the greatest debt in history, should unilaterally decide what it is and the Congress should have no say. Right. That, that's and the key. That for... Democrats could not go along with. First of all, most of his own supporters are worried about the deficit. It would refocus the issue away from taxes to begin with to a really critical issue, which is our, which is spending. It would be, and and it just strikes me that if they would introduce this, you would you think that Mary Landrieu or David Pryor or a number of other senators uh, in the Senate, uh, Joe Lieberman, are gonna, would vote for this? Yeah. Do you think you know if you put this up and make this the issue, that's how you turn things. That's how you redefine where, well, who's got the momentum, and it but might finally get us to a deal because right now the president's position is. You know, uh, as, as Charles Granthammer said, uh, it's surrender terms. Uh, Lee got better surrender terms at Appomattox. Right. Uh, Pat Cadell's our guest, and his post, the, the article that we're talking about, actually, uh, you can find it over at Breitbart News in the big government section. And uh, I love the fact that you bring up Article 1 of the Constitution here, because this really is something that not just Republicans, but that vast middle that, uh, you know, that they may have voted for Obama, but they're very wary of ceding constitutional power from the House over to the executive branch, you would think. And you make the great point that the Republicans' fight is not with Obama, it's 
with that the, the public opinion. Uh, how can they utilize this issue, this constitutional fight, and make it a good PR thing? Or will it look like they're you know in the the, the Tea Party well, fringe, well, as they call it? You don't make it a PR. You make it a fight. You see, you bring everything to a halt. You put a bill up. You, if I were McConnell, instead of laughing about it, you know, I would get up. I would put up. You know, I would offer a. You know, I would find a way to attach it to some bill. I would force it on the Senate. And if Boehner's got an easy thing, he can bring it up in the House. But force this and just bring everything to it. Everything to but go, go on offense. You want Take the Republicans to go on offense. You, that's exactly how you turn. You know, the, that's what the. You know, that's a, that's a war. That's what the and French ma- do. Make, make the Democrats in the House vote in favor make of ceding all make, authority. Make them take a record. Yeah. Make the media. Make everybody say yeah. and get the president to answer the single. And I understand that Wall Street, according to the Hill, is in favor of this. That would be great for the for, for the Republicans. They can well, now just... attack Wall Street too, because Wall Street's for it because all they want to do is line their pockets. The answer is: Why does this president think he deserves? This kind of power, uh, and uh, you know, Franklin Roosevelt was a god, and he'd won sixty-one percent of the vote. Barack Obama is not god, and he didn't, and he got barely fifty. Uh, so, all right, you know, that's he's my, not the well, god, but he is the second. Well, I think you make a great point, Pat, and and, and and it's obviously like, why are we thinking that way? All right, so he, here's my question, though: as you look at these nego- the state of the negotiations today, where Geithner comes in and, and gives this laughable proposal, and the Republicans offer their proposal, and, I mean, literally nanoseconds after it landed on the White House desk, it was dead on arrival and announced as such. I mean, given where we are right now, I don't see us coming to any conclusion anytime soon. I don't either. That's why I said just change the debate. Let's go to one fundamental first question. Because with that, winning that debate will then give the momentum to one side or the other. The president needs to be slapped down, frankly, politically. This act of his is wow. arrogance. Hey, but, yes. but Pat Kidog, your, your colleague over there, Bill Crystal at Fox News, you're both an analysts for Fox News, and he's made a lot of headlines lately saying that the Republicans are in danger of looking like they don't care about the middle class. Uh, what, what, isn't there a messaging problem there as well? Well, yes, there is. I, I've said already that, look, this instinct to throw themselves across the third rail of American politics on Medicare and Social Security, that uh, doesn't help them. You know, the fact is the government is spending way too much money you know, the, the, this is a moral issue. The Republicans have never sold it. They don't know how to. They didn't fight for it in the election. They gave him the, the, the debt limit away in 2011. Look, the, Barack Obama last in, in, in August 11th, the fiasco that got us to this place. The only thing Barack Obama wanted was that, that there'd be no debt ceiling vote prior to the election. Well, good old, good old General McConnell, he gave it to them, you know, just the man who managed to, to, he is, I don't get it. He's going to be reelected right. on a post. And he's, he's had two of the greatest fiasco Senate elections in history. All right. We're going to have to leave it right there. Pat Cadell, really appreciate it. Interesting idea. And you know what? A lot of interesting people, a lot of important people listen to this program. Perhaps uh, they'll follow your advice. Thanks, Pat. Really appreciate it. It's